Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video today we're going to be talking about blood flow to the brain. So if you do like this video, make sure to go check out NinjaNerd.org. That's where all the notes and illustrations for all the lectures we put up here on YouTube are available for you. And also check out our Instagram, our Facebook, we even have a Twitter, we also have a Discord if you guys want to check that out. And then also go check out our Ninja Nerd merch. We got some merch. Go check it out. I think it's fun. I like to wear it in our videos. But let's get started now as we talk about blood flow to the brain. What's going on? and how does blood get to the brain, right? Because when we're talking about blood flow to the brain, we're talking about circulation, we're talking about perfusion, right? So we're gonna be able to get this oxygen, this nutrients delivered to all these different areas. And we know, especially within the neuro, neuro, that when we have a patient who has some type of issue getting blood flow to our brain, something's going on, there's some occlusion, there's some blockage, there's gonna be neurological symptoms, right? So it's important for us to understand a little bit of what's going on inside, right? This isn't gonna be like the most in-depth anatomy video of blood flow to the brain, every single vessel and artery and uh, vein and you know nugget of places that blood can go. This is gonna be a very simple watered down just so we can get an understanding of how it gets to the brain, right? So how does blood move through the body? We got our heart right here, right? So we have our heart, our heart, we're looking at an anterior view, we have our right and our left, our right atria, our right ventricle, our left atria and our left ventricle. And as it pumps that blood out through the aorta, we can then now see that we have all of these different vessels that start to break off. And when we're talking about blood flow to the brain, we're talking about blood coming from the heart, going up and ascending up through our neck and then into the brain, right, into the cranium. So when we look at the aorta, the aorta has three little branches that come off of it. Those three little branches are things called the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. It's important for us to note here that every vessel I'm talking about within this video is going to be an artery because that's how we're going to be delivering blood. So we have these branches that come off. We have our brachiocephalic artery that then will break off into our right subclavian artery and our right common carotid. So we can see that it, it bifurcates here and there's a fork and the fork in the road then allows for our right subclavian and our right common carotid, which is great because now we have a nice little more symmetry, a little more symmetrical diagram that we can look at. Right subclavian, right common carotid, left common carotid, left subclavian. So for those of you who need a little more idea of what we're talking about here, I drew this really nice skull, right? This really nice skull here. And we can see that we have our right subclavian and then our right common carotid, our left subclavian and our left common carotid. And if you need a little more understanding, right, we're talking about our right subclavian, it's coming under the clavicle, our left subclavian coming under the clavicle, and then we have our common carotids coming up. When we check a patient's pulse, we're checking the carotid, we're putting our hands on the carotid, right? We're gonna be able to feel the heart pumping, right? We're gonna feel that pulse, and then we're gonna be able to check the patient's heart rate. Never check, right? Double, never, never check double carotid, right? We're including both sides of the brain, but we want to at least occlude one carotid so we're able to check pulse. That's what we're looking at right here, right? We're basically occluding and feeling the patient's pulse right there. So if we take this image and then look at it back over here, we can now see and follow our left common carotid. As our left common carotid comes up and ascends, right? So it's coming up and ascending up into the head eventually, it bifurcates. The name of these two bifurcated vessels, super easy. This is why the carotid is the great, best spot to start. The left common carotid comes on up and it bifurcates. We have two here. We have this one and this one. This one here that's coming off and not going into our cerebral circulation is our external, our external carotid artery. Going off and delivering blood not to the cerebral circulation. This side here, as we come up and ascend into our cerebral circulation, is our internal carotid artery. So we have our external carotid artery and our internal carotid artery. Let's do an arrow like that. Great, okay? More importantly to denote, we have the left common carotid that breaks apart into our left internal and our left external. Very good, easy. Okay, so now that we've got that down, let's go over here to the right common carotid. We have the right common carotid. It is now ascending up into. We have one that is ascending into the cerebral circulation. From the right common carotid, the vessel that is then going into our cerebral circulation is our 
right internal carotid artery. So our right internal carotid artery, also known as RICA, and then we also have our left internal carotid artery, also known as our LICA. And then we have our right common carotid coming up and ascending away from cerebral circulation. That is our right external carotid artery. As we look at this vessel here, we can now understand that within this diagram, we have our common carotids that ascend and they break into our internal and external artery, carotid arteries. Depending on where they're delivering blood, if it's internal, they're coming into our cerebral circulation. If it's external, that means they're delivering blood into a different area. So what, wh where are they going? We've identified that the internal carotid arteries, they are going to be delivering blood into our cerebral circulation. But where is our external carotid arteries delivering blood? What are they doing? The external carotid arteries are delivering blood to all those extracranial areas that we need blood delivered to, things like our glands, things like our muscles. Now that we've gotten these two identified, we still got two other structures that are coming off our subclavian, right? So we have our left subclavian and our right subclavian, and we can see that there's this vessel coming up through, and we also have our left subclavian, this vessel coming up through. So we have these two vessels here, right? These are called our vertebral arteries, right? And our vertebral arteries are named appropriately for the left vertebral and the right vertebral. So this is our right one, and this is our left. So those two are also going to help deliver blood into our cerebral circulation. And now that we look at this, we have the vessels that are going to supply blood into our cerebral circulation, which is then gonna help us identify which vessels break off in order to deliver blood to different structures. So now we're going to talk about a little bit about the circle of Willis and the cerebral structure and how to identify what those different vessels are and also what structures they are delivering blood to. Now that we've talked about how the blood gets up into the cerebral circulation, we're also going to talk about how it moves through, right? So up here we have this nice diagram of our inferior view of the brain, just so you guys can get an understanding of where some of this cerebral circulation is. So I took all those vessels out and I plopped them here without anything else hopefully distracting so we can get a little more of an idea of how this circulation works. Now remember, this is a 2D and I'm gonna try to make it a 3D model like in your head, try to understand what's going on here. So as we talk about the cerebral circulation and eventually the circle of Willis, we've just identified how blood ascends from the heart up into this circulation. And we talked about four different vessels that essentially are helping bring blood into this area. And if you remember them from a couple minutes ago, great. If you don't, I have a way that helps you remember. Uh, some people will giggle at me, but that's fine. I remember it as Rick Lick the Verdi Twins. So for me, in my head, let me write this down for you real quick. We have Rick and we have Lick and they're the Verdi twins, so their last name is Verdi or Vert. Right. And this is something that when I take an exam or if I'm trying to remember something, I can remember this little mnemonic, this little funny, goofy thing in my head, and I'm like, oh, those are the four vessels. So if we look at this, we have the right internal carotid, the left internal carotid, and then, since this is Rick Vert, it's also our right vertebral and our left vertebral. So, in purple, I'm going to quickly identify where those are on this structure. At the bottom here, because that's where I always like to start, we have two vessels coming up in. This one and this one. So, we have on this side flowing up and on this side flowing up. This one right here is our right vertebral artery. And then this side, left vertebral artery. So now that we're looking at that, we can see that these two vessels are coming up and flowing in, right? So we have this blood flow circulation. Let's do that in this nice blue color so it's easy to see, flowing up. So we said the Verdi twins, right? So we have the right vertebral and the left vertebral, but we also have to identify our carotids. So the carotids are actually up here. Flowing up into here is our right internal carotid and our left internal carotid.
Now that we've gone to understand where the blood flow is coming in, now I like to take this diagram and just go up and identify all the different structures. And what I like about the cerebral circulation and what I think is really fun about the circle of Willis is if we were to draw an imaginary line down the middle here and split it, we would have a very almost symmetrical or completely mirrored image of the right versus the left side. So we're going to identify and just write, because it's easier for me to write on the board, over here, but understand that the mirrored side is always going to be the same name. It's just going to be the right whatever artery, okay? So we're looking at this as these two vertebral arteries come up and they join together, they create this big vessel right here in the middle. This vessel right in the middle here is called our bacillar artery. That is one of two arteries that don't have a left and a right, but they are just known as the artery itself. So this is the bacillar artery. So as we look at this and we see the bacillar arteries coming up the middle, we can now see that there are different branches that are coming off. So blood flow is coming up, but it's also going to be coming out through these different vessels here, right? So as we follow these vertebral arteries up, we follow into the bacillar, we get our first pair here that's breaking off. The first pair here, where we're gonna have our right and our left, is our anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Our anterior inferior cerebellar artery. And our anterior inferior cerebellar artery delivers blood to the anterior inferior cerebellum. Great. As we move up into the next pair, we have this right here. So this is also our anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Now as we follow the bacillar artery up, right, after our anterior inferior cerebellar artery, we have our next set. And our pair here is known as a labyrinthine artery. And these arteries are allowing blood flow to be delivered to our inner ear. As we ascend up further, we now have this set of four right here. They are known as the pontine artery. And these pontine arteries help deliver blood to the pons, which makes sense if we look here on this diagram, we can see our midbrain, our pons, and our medulla oblongata, and we can see that those little ones are coming off and they're right over or underneath inferior to the pons, and those are gonna help deliver blood there. And then as we ascend up further, we start to get into an area that gets muddled, right? Where does one vessel end and where does one start? So when we look at this, we can now start to identify different branches or segments as well to different vessels. So as we come up, bacillar artery breaks into these two bigger branches here. These two bigger branches here are our superior cerebellar artery. And the superior cerebellar artery allows for blood flow to be to our superior cerebellum. This vessel right here actually has those segments that I was talking about before. Let's use black so we can see it. This vessel right here is known as our posterior cerebral artery. Posterior cerebral artery is allowing blood flow to start to enter the circle of Willis here. It's also broken into two different segments. We have the segment that's part of the circle of Willis, which is P1, and then the other part that branches off, which is P2. So if you're looking at this, you can see that we're getting some blood flow to our cerebral now, right? The posterior cerebral, it's getting to areas that we need back there. And as we continue up this circle of Willis, we have this vessel here, from here to here. This vessel is known as our posterior communicating artery. Our posterior communicating artery is allowing for blood flow to basically move from the posterior cerebral up into these vessels here. So it's connecting that circle. And you can see that. So it's not delivering blood to any port and structures or anything like that, but it's allowing for blood flow to be shunted and moving around through this circle of Willis. It actually then moves blood from the posterior cerebral artery up into our middle cerebral artery. And our middle cerebral artery is going to allow for blood flow to get to things like our, our primary motor cortex, our Broca's or Wernicke's area. Then we're gonna move on to this vessel right here where we can see that it kind of scoops and swoops its way over. So again, we have one that's going to be broken into different segments. 
And this is known as our anterior cerebral artery. Where we have segment A1 and A2. Now that we look at this entire structure, there is one vessel we haven't identified yet, one that we need to talk about. So we see blood flow coming up through, it's coming out, it's pushing out of these vessels, it continues to come up right through the circle of Willis. And if you're going to notice, we talked about the mirroring, right? So everything from this side is on this side. But I said in the beginning, when we got to the section, there's two vessels that they're just named. They're not a left and a right. They're just in the middle. We have the bacillar artery, and then we have one other right here in the middle. I'm going to give it a little pink color so I can see it a little bit. And this is known as our anterior communicating artery. The anterior communicating artery is then allowing for blood to shunt between the left and right hemisphere, right? It's allowing them blood to move out both of these vessels in order to get out into those necessary structures. So when we take a step back and we look at this entire structure, we can see how blood is moving up and out and into different areas of our brain. And sometimes we have tests or exams that are going to ask us to identify the different vessels of the circle of Willis. So what we can do for that is I'll use the blue, and I'll put it next to the vessels, is we can go through and just take a second to think, okay, the circle of Willis is, is a circle, right? We can see that flowing through, but it's also going to a lot of important structures. The most important structure of our brain is our cerebrum, right? So really easy to think, okay, we have the anterior cerebral artery, the middle cerebral, and the posterior cerebral artery. We look at this, we can, oh, I put posterior communicating, posterior cerebral artery, right? So we have identified there's at least three, but we also have to talk about the two communicating arteries, right? They're allowing for flow through this circle. So they are also part of our circle of Willis, right? And then we have one other we also need to, to talk about a little bit is this internal carotid that's bringing this blood in, okay? So we also have the internal carotid that's important. And as we look at all of these different structures, we can see that it is creating basically a circle, right? This blood flow allowing for blood to be circulated, to be shunted, to be moved around the brain and get to those various structures. And if there's any portion of this that gets blocked, particularly within the, the circle, there's going to be a lot of cognitive issues, right? We're going to see some neuro deficits, there's going to be neurological changes within our patients, different types of symptoms that may manifest. So it's really important for us to at least understand that there is an intrinsic circulation, a cerebral flow that we have of blood flow. And it's going to allow for blood flow to get sent or delivered to different structures within our brain. And without that, we can then see some issues or some problems with our patients. So I hope this video made sense. I hope you learned something. I hope I was able to clear up anything about cerebral circulation and the circle of Willis. And as always, until next time.